Hello, love. Welcome home to Eden. This is Eve Christophe, your love life muse. Stick with me for the hottest news and subscribe to this channel to get somewhere new. This is Love Life with Eve and you have entered Eve's Eden. <laughs> so gosh, the theme this week has been tell your man what you need him to do when he goes down on you <laughs> and when he doesn't too. <laughs> You know, we tend to think two things that are not really true about our guys. One is that they do know what to do and they're just not bothering. No, they don't really know. <laughs> Come on, they have a really different apparatus. And you gotta let them know and, and have the courage, okay? The other thing we think is that um, they won't care if we tell them and they won't bother. That's probably not true. I mean, really, if the guy won't bother and doesn't care, he's probably really not worth your time. You should let him go, because <laughs> it's not it's just gonna get worse. <laughs> but most guys, they want to be the ultimate lover to you. They want you to obsess about them. They want you to dream about them. <laughs> and they know you're only going to if you're really, really showing signs of satisfaction. And when we fake it, they can tell. They can tell. Most of them can tell. So don't fake it, all right? My girlfriends this week were talking about how, you know, there's this thing where we think we're more feminine if we pretend to be innocent. Oh, I just don't know what I need. You'll figure it out. You know, you're doing fine. And, and, and just, you know, we think that if we're that kind of woman who just says, hey, honey, just do over to the right, <laughs> faster, slower, and then <laughs> down low and up and down, you know, we think that we're just not feminine and we're not going to be appealing and they're not going to feel as masculine. But trust me, darling, when they start start succeeding and your sounds are really different than they ever were and and your smile is different and your laughter is different they feel so successful and and you've done them a big big favor okay love so be sure to be vocal about what you need <laughs> That's my neighbor, Joe. <laughs> He's not a cook, he says. <laughs> a crook. He's doing this. <laughs> okay, much love, darling. Love life. And um, be brave and, and honest and vocal. And both of you will be so much happier. Okay. Love life enough to do what I'm saying. Mm. Hello, love. Welcome home to Eden. This is Eve Kristoff, your love life muse. Subscribe to this channel for the hottest news and you will get somewhere new if you stay to the end of the video. <laughs> so listen, let's talk about powerful sexiness, okay? Let's talk about boobs and ass and <laughs> legs <laughs> and cleavage and all that. Backs. There's some awesome fashions going on now, right? But I got in trouble at work. Oh my God! And I got faced with this huge paradox, this, this, this unfair situation where they were like, you're dressed too sexy. And my thought was, I'm not even started yet. <laughs> what are you talking about? These shorts are four inches below my butt. <laughs> These heels are the only thing I'm doing. Everything else is covered. So it was really, really shocking and disappointing. They're like, if you do that again, you know, uh, we're basically showing leg with heels, um, we're gonna pull you aside. And and I and my boss was like, I don't want to be that man who, who you know, tells the woman not to be sexy. But I'm gonna be him and tell him I'll pull you aside and make you change your clothes and all this. It was like really outrageous, right? So I got to thinking about this. Okay, so think about it. Sexiness for women is powerful. That's, that's, that's how we enter a room with power and actually hold power, sway power, is if we are within our sexuality, we're showing our sexuality. Now, I saw a girl crossing the street with her little shirt above her waist and her butt crack showing and then her under booty showing with the shorts so short and the, and the bra straps and I was like, that kind of looks a little trashy, I don't know, it got, kind of too much. 
much. Well, oh yeah, so there is that, right? And there's the mystery and covering enough and just showing enough that your sexual power is not about giving away too much. It's about um, allowing people to admire you, okay? Because you're covered enough and you're showing enough. <laughs> but listen, it, it was it's such a paradox, right? Okay, so the guys, they can wear their power suits. For them, power is about their vocation. It's about their... Uh, status. It's about um, what they can afford and things like that. So they can wear a watch, uh, uh, a fitted suit, uh, a suit and tie, and bam, they got the power, power outfit on. But us women on the job site, we put on those same clothes. We look so ugly. We look so bad. I mean, the fact that Hillary Clinton won by three million votes wearing those horrible power suits <laughs> shows that people loved her. <laughs> you know, it's just, we look bad. We look dumpy. We do not look powerful. We look like wannabes, right? But if a woman comes into the room with her gorgeous fitted dress and her incredible heels and her legs showing, whatever, her hair done, she's powerful. She's swaying power in the room. Now, my boss goes, everybody noticed, everybody felt it. Well, like, well, yeah, like any sexy woman who feels her power should be noticed. It's okay, right? It's, why is that such a, a bad thing? He should be saying to his bosses, yeah, the women are dressing a little sexy, you know, and it's raising the testosterone in the room. People want to try harder <laughs> when they know these girls are around. And that's really the truth. So, but then I think it, where do I get to dress sexy? Who gets to dress sexy? You have the prostitutes, right, Joe? You have the, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> you have the um, exotic dancers. You have, they are allowed to dress sexy, right? Now, who else? You can't, I worked with kids for 30 years. Could I dress sexy with them? No, not allowed. Could I dress sexy when I was um, cleaning houses? No, you get in trouble with the <laughs> the guy whose house you're cleaning. Uh, that's a distraction. Where can you dress sexy? At McDonald's or these places? No, you got to wear those horrible Smurf outfits. All right, we look bad. We're being disempowered by our bosses tell us what to wear to say, take off your power. Don't show your power, right? Where can we, who, who? The doctors and lawyer women, they're powerful enough. Think about it. The doctor women, they have to wear those those clinical outfits like they're some kind of people from a morgue. No, it's not sexy. And what about the, the, the lawyer women? Oh yes, they can wear heels and a fitted suit. That's about it, but it's still a man's outfit. God, and that's the best we can do, be lawyer women? No, all the other women of the whole planet are being told this paradox. All the guys, they see the boobs in the face. So you have the college girls can dress sexy, right? Because they're not working. They don't have a boss down their back. <laughs> Who else? The, the high school girls, inappropriately, totally over the top sexy because their parents are supporting them. They'll get in trouble with their teacher or their moms. Maybe? No, not anymore. Okay, so you have the children, the young women, only ones not working, allowed to be sexy. And all the women who are the real ones, ready to be in relationships and be intimate, are supposed to hide their power. Oh no, girlfriend, boyfriend. So guys, if you're in a situation and you, you're a boss and you feel like, oh God, she's a little over the top, what am I gonna do? Don't do anything, let her be. Let it be something that's wild and exciting and a little out of control. Just talk to her in person about, hey, you know, in my job, like when you go on the doors, <laughs> do you tone it down? I'm like, yes, I really do. I, I put on flat shoes <laughs> and I make myself look like a Smurf. <clears throat> so anybody feels safe with a little Smurf on the doorstep, you know? But in between, my goodness, I come up to the office, I, I, I go shopping, whatever. I wanna be a woman. I wanna be a sexy woman and a powerful woman. Power! So we're supposed to be <laughs> less attractive when we want power, right? That's what they say. All right, well, let's, let's dare to be less attractive by wanting to be attractive as we seek power being letting our power show i mean okay this is a little bit of a rant but think about it only 50 years ago women had to wear the, the push-up pointy bras and the pantyhose and the heels and they had no freedom so there was all this women's rights stuff which, which in the end has turned around so that we have to dress like men now we don't have the right to look sexy or dress sexy on the job that's inappropriate what has happened what have we gained
if we can't even be in that power. We used to have that power. And have you ever noticed when you watch those old movies, the women in the job sites, uh, job offices, whatever, they're swishing around in these incredibly sexy fitted outfits, you know, and their heels, and they're wielding some power that way. Are the men listening to them 50 years ago more back then? I think they were listening more back then because any guy who's riveted by a woman's uh, sensuality and sexuality starts to listen. He can't help it. <laughs> okay, so what are you going to do about it? What am I going to do about it? I'll tell you what I'm doing. I'm applying. Actually, I just got accepted to go to the higher office, uh, you know, above the one I've been working in. And I talked to the boss there and I said, you know, one of the things I'm looking forward to about this higher position is I want to dress like a lady. And he was like, I like how you're thinking. But guess what about that boss? He's Latin. <laughs> White guys suck. They're so uptight. My boss, who wants me to dress like a nebbish my whole life and who's afraid of, of my sexuality, who can't handle it, <laughs> he's a young white guy. <laughs> and the Latin guys, they can handle these beautiful Latin women who are decked in their sexual feminine power with their beautiful smells and their beautiful jewelry and their clothing that fits their bodies. It's not made for a man. Okay, I love you Latin guys. Come on, teach these white guys something. Would you talk to them, please? They're so... New England? Is it New England? I mean, gosh, if I was in Miami, this would not be a conversation. <laughs> okay, I love you so much. Love life, darling. Let's do something. Let's rock this boat. Let's rock the boat.